your girl, Veronica Harris. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode, or welcome to another episode of the Veronica Harris Show. And yeah, welcome back to those of you that have, that have been riding with us. I am here with my co-host, Gregory, what are you today? Remember, you used to have a new job every time when we were in the studio. What are you today? Uh, I mean, for not, not a new job, but my new title is Pound yeah. for Pound, World's Fittest Man. <laughs> pound for Pound. Oh, pound for pound. Okay. I've been that's putting all pounds, so I had to put the pound for pound part on it now. Why you gain some weight? Yeah, I'm like 230 now, Rock. What's wrong with you? Hey, I mean, um, it's maturity. <laughs> <laughs> I know, okay. So you over here putting on weight, and I'm over here losing weight. Okay, that's good. Let's even it out. All right. Well, anyway. You know, Gregory, I, you know, you found that one good guest and I'm telling you, we're we going to keep you, we gonna keep running. Like I say, run that back, run that back. We're going to keep right. running that back. We have Mr. Eric Singletary again, co uh, all met coach of the year, uh, state champion, final four uh, participant, um, conference champion, just all around champion. <laughs> Uh, head coach for Sidwell Friends Basketball. Thank you and welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having welcome me back, back to the show. Like, this, awesome like they say, like they say, third time's a charm. Okay. <laughs> so today, what we want to talk about, and we've talked about so many interesting things, but today we want to talk about, you know, they talk about the modern woman, but we're not going to talk about the modern woman, but let's talk about the modern, <laughs> we're not going to talk about the modern, but let's talk about the modern kid. The modern athlete. The modern athlete. The modern yeah. athlete, because they're not built like us. They were, they're different. And that's not to say that, you know, that's a bad thing. It's just a recognizing mm -hmm. of a difference. Um, what have you known? Now, you started coaching. Well, let's, when you let's, let's, start, let's, let's, Brock, let's start with a game, okay? Okay, what's the game? I'll go first. Okay. okay. You'll go second. We'll let Eric go third. Okay. And we're going to say something. I'm a, uh, we're going to we're going to mention something about what the past athletes do and what the current athletes do. Okay. All right. Okay. Past athletes, depending on how far in the past you go back, wore their pants baggy. The current athlete likes to show their thighs. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> um. Past athletes. Um. Uh, didn't have social media accounts. They didn't have uh, followers or their popularity wasn't measured in terms of followers. Modern athletes have followers. They have social media accounts. They're influencers. Okay. So on you, um, E. I say past athletes um, were more detail-oriented into the almost the submission of the team. And I think the modern athlete uh, has much more awareness of his own personal brand as it relates to the team. Mm, yeah. Past athletes... Um, Are we doing round two? Okay. Yeah, we keep going with it, baby. <laughs> Past athletes would score and be humble. Current athletes celebrate every time they score. Flexing, shooting the arrow. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta celebrate every basket. Your turn, okay. bro. Past athletes didn't profit off their name and image and likeness. Modern athletes can and sometimes do profit off their name, image, and likeness. Past athletes um, were indoctrinated into the sanctity of the locker room and the modern athlete, all is fair game. You can't expect anything not to make it back to their parents. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So where was the purpose of- Last round, last round. Okay, last round. <laughs> Past athletes, if you ask them, uh, were they were they good? They would say, "Yeah, I'm okay." Current athletes, if you ask about they good, they say, "I'm the greatest of all time." 
I'm a goat. <laughs> That's a title now. I'm a goat. Okay. Um, past athletes uh, were very deferential to their coaches. Modern athletes will curse the coach out in a heartbeat. <laughs> they chug them to deuces. <laughs> Path, past athletes um, to that point were much more resilient to figure out a situation. The modern athlete, you know, tends to exist in the vacuum of free agency. So they're looking for either the next best thing or looking to run from a situation uh, very quickly. Okay, good. So Bradley, what was the purpose of the game? So we're gonna, uh, you know, as talking about the modern athletes, good to look back and see where we've come from mm -hmm. also i want to explore like how do we get there and now that we're here what do we do all right well gregory since this was on you you go ahead and take it away um well we talked about the social media and and that sort of thing like the access to technology has really allow these modern athletes to grow up in, in, a, in a whole new world. Okay. It's a whole new world uh, just with the, the exposure, mm -hmm. the exposure and access to resources. So I know I look at it, we, we think about it, and I, I try not to say it so much, but I'll get with a buddy of mine and we'll get talking. He's like, man, can you imagine if we had this, if we had that? We didn't have trainers. We didn't have access to that. We didn't have access to any of that stuff. And, you know, we kind of look at these athletes now as like, like, if you don't make it, if you can't make it now, then, man, what are you doing? Do y'all see it like that? Like, it's much easier. Do you feel like if you, when in your day, if you had the same access to technology and smartphones and, and training programs and nutrition information, and would, would, you, would you be the greatest of all time? That's a good question. Um, I will I will say this, and this I cannot take credit for. It. This came from another coach. He says he would say to the team. He said to the team several times. He said, "You," he said, "You athletes, he said, you guys are the only people that we could put you in. We could lock you up in a grocery store, and you would still starve." Oh. Meaning that in the grocery store, you got all the food you could want, need to be, you know, for your nutrition, to be, you know, not be go hungry, but yet you'll starve because you won't take advantage of what is there in front of you. Now, sometimes, let's be honest, sometimes you may not know how, or you may not know how to figure, well, figure out the thing that, yeah, I can use this. Right. But also what I see, and I see it in my students, yeah, they will not take the time to ask the question to say, hey, how do I use this? Is this good to do? They won't even ask the question. And when I ask students, why won't you ask the question? The, the answer that they give me or the answers that I get would blow your mind. First of all, they say, well, I don't, I, I don't want to do that because they may think it's a stupid question. Okay. So you, you rather sit there and be ignorant. I got you. Anybody else <laughs> jump in? No, I mean, I, I think, you know, both of you, are, you know, especially Ron, you're spot on. I think that the current climate, because of social media, has made every kid feel like there's a window into who they are. Uh, we were able to be much more private, uh, fail, maybe with a small group of people. Um, not be embarrassed in a small group, but now their embarrassment is much more you know, you know, worldwide possibly. And so the, the risk of that has made these kids actually be more risk averse because of the, uh, the scrutiny that comes with social media and basically going viral. You know, we, we rarely hear going viral with something positive too. And so, right. you know, there's an element of that that I think gives them trepidation over trying things or it's like, oh, if I think this is going to be hard, I'd rather not try. At least I can tell you I didn't try as opposed to giving your all and failing in front of a large group of people, if not social media, 
Uh, I mean, the people on social media, like the whole world is a mirror into like their whole life. And even though they're uh, willing participants to do that, that's why I don't, the argument about what we would do, Greg, isn't relevant because we were forged in the time that we were forged in. And so, you know, some of the things we didn't have is what made us who we were. And so if we had these things, it's easy to say, because you, now you're trying to combine who we were now with what, what's available to you. You can't always do that. Uh, so as a, in a perfect world, you can do that to say, I'm, I'll be the same person I am today. And with the resources, I'd be much better. You know what I mean? So I always think that's kind of like a, a canard, so to speak. You know, it's, it's not a great argument because we were forged in like, you know, some of the things we didn't have that they do have. Wait, let me look up the word canard because I've heard it before, but I just want to make sure I got the definition. I'm telling you, it's that Sidwell friends education <laughs> coming through once again. <laughs> keep keep your dictionary handy, bro. I know, right? If you listen, if you listen to any of these shows, keep your dictionary handy. And I will honestly say, you know what, Gregory, you do that that the math of education thing got you good too, because I've heard you say some words. With the social media and the research, Vanessa, my, my daughter asked me today, she was like, uh, that all these people are posting their offers. And I was like, yeah, well, those offers aren't real. And she's like, they're not real? I'm like, yeah, they're real, but what's the difference between interest and offers? So I'm like, you know, in the ninth grade, like then nobody, I don't know, this might be, I don't know, Eric, you might know a little better than I do because you kind of hung with the, you know, some of the higher profile athletes. I was late on the AAU scene, so I wasn't recruited that heavily. But, you know, now they're offering kids scholars, they, you know, they sending offers to ninth graders now, eighth graders now. Right. And that's like the when thing. You play, we didn't get, nobody's getting offers until your junior year, right? And that's the thing, yeah. Like, I think that, you know, as things change, they'll always change for the better, right? And like I said, the truth being in the middle, like you were you were severely under-recruited and today you'd be like a big, I mean, you were big time to me back then, but like you'd be a big time guard today going to, you know, a much bigger school than Mount St. Mary's. And um, it just shows you how things have changed and not necessarily for the better, Like, right? But I think that highlights and illustrates what we were talking about though. Now the average kid who wasn't as good as you thinks they deserve something greater than like what you had. And so I think, you know, to no fault of their own, at the end of the day, it's the adults who've made certain, you know, transactions and, uh, you know, this is us, you know, and the coach still controls the scholarship. Why are we offering an eighth grader? Because we want to be first. And we want to be, you know, and why are people posting their offers? Because once again, we're bankrupt somewhere that we want others to feel like that we're greater than we actually are. So it's an ego grab, I'm telling you. Like, that's the only reason you would post the offer as a ninth grader, you can't even take it. So we just want people to always see us like in such a positive light. And that's what social media has done. Like, as well as it's introduced and connected the world, it certainly has made uh, people, I think, even more bankrupt, you know, more, you know, inside their own constitution. And let me add to that, um, because I do coach on a D3 level. Um, and But Eric, you can also speak to this as a high school coach that's dealing with athletes that are going on to Division One, Division Two, whatever they're going to. Just because you got an offer does not mean, the question now becomes, well, what kind of offer did you get? Mm -hmm. Okay, because not every offer is a fully funded, full tuition. They could say, we just offering you books. They can say, we're just going to give you tuition. They say, we're only going to do half. So right. yeah, you got an offer. Oh, I got a D1 offer. Okay, yes. But here's another thing I always say, how much are you having to come out of pocket? When I was being recruited, you know, Wake Forest wanted me bad, but Wake Forest was capping it at a certain number. I said, well, if you can't do what Seton Hall does, is doing, which is a full scholarship, I, I, I'm not going, yeah. you know, love you. I like your school, but mm -hmm. I'm not going there. Because no, that was my standard. It had to be, I'm not paying a dime. Right. And trust me, when mommy would get those bills, she would be like, oh yeah, just put that on the other side. Yeah. You know, because, you know, and that's what, that's what you know, really not just students, but a lot of students and, and parents do not understand that. And second of all, you, somebody's saying they offering you, the head coach isn't offering you because the head coach can't even talk to you. 
Right. You know, there is such a thing as a recruiting count. You know, there's a recruiting count. There's a timeline, and it's against you know the NCAA rules for coaches to talk to even a, a head coach can't even talk to a freshman. Yeah. So that's what we're, that's what we're saying though. Social media has created a, a platform of people to outdo each other, right? And I'm not saying that's new. It's just, it's created a bigger platform for people to feel like, I don't want to be left behind. I want to be seen as greater than my peers. Like you said, the, I always say, if you want to know if an offer is real, try to take it. Tell them, tell them that you're coming and then see if it's real. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, it's just, like I said, it's just another form of like, how do I make myself look better to the world? Like, how do I outdo somebody else? You know what I mean? That's, that's such an integral part of, like, you know, unfortunately, like, who we are. Big question. So when you have students that are, you know, athletes that are looking to get scholarship money or whatever, do you uh, really inf uh, enforce upon, not enforce, but do you really impress upon them, like, listen, go where you can afford to go? especially if it's not a full, if they're not getting a full scholarship, are you saying you need to go where you can afford to go? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the situation. Like I said, being here at Sidwell, we have families that yeah, that's true. sometimes have some means to be able to do Division three, and that fits the mode of what they're trying to do academically. Uh, and if they're able to foot the bill, um, then I kind of lean towards go where they want you, go where you need it, uh, go where you can make an impact. And then, you know, the, the fourth rung of that would be, you know, if you were in a financial situation, certainly go where you can afford it. But most times I'm usually just saying go where you can be impactful because the financial part hasn't been either. I've had like Josh Hart, Sadiq Bay, who played at Villanova and some other kids who've gone D1. Oh, I've had a ton of Division three athletes who could afford that education that they wanted and play basketball at the same time. Okay. Yeah, that's, I forget. I, you know, as soon as I said that, I was like, wait a minute. I, who am I talking to here? Like these kids, <laughs> if they can afford to go to see well friends, they can go to a lot of these schools out here. Like, duh, like what am I thinking about? <laughs> still a good question. It's still a good question. You know, I would definitely say that if that was if I ran into that more often, then I would say, you know, not having student debt that all three of us can relate to was like actually one of the greatest, you know, blessings in our life. You know what I mean? So um, and we happened to do it in places where we were successful, you know, they wanted us and we were able to play in that small fraternity of athletes who get the chance to do that. But, you know, if you're having a situation where you got to choose, I mean, at the end of the day, I always say like, what, you know, what's going to make you sleep at night? So if you can afford it, then, you know, I'll, I'll support it. But certainly if they've given you more money over here, um, you know, that's usually an indication of how much they want you to. People like to say, um, if I would do it again, I would do it exactly the same way. Hmm. I myself, don't feel that way. I, I wish I had a time machine because I know there's things I would do differently. Mm -hmm. Asking you to, uh, looking back, knowing what you know now, would you go if, and you could pick a time, high school, college, you know, early 20s, early 30s, Veronica for you, early 40s. Oh, Gregory, <laughs> I know what I, if I didn't, have, I would take this remote control and, ooh. <laughs> well, what, would you, would you pick an instance that you would go back and you'd be like, you know what? Mm. Uh, I would probably do this a little differently. Eric, you first. <laughs> I'm still mad. <laughs> um, that's a tough question, Greg, because like, you know, with the sum of our choices and experiences and, and they yeah. all were tough and they were great. And But if I had to pick one, as much as I love Rice in Houston, um, I think one of the things you take for granted as a young athlete is that your career will never be over and that at some point your family will be able to kind of reconnect with you and, uh, you know, maybe we were going to be pros, right? And so I think if I had to do it over again, I would have went to somewhere closer to home so my family could have been a part of my experience. Good one. Yeah, I can see that. Now, my family was, I, I was fortunate enough to play, you know, close enough to where my family was at all, all my games and you know, so many people, I was talking with some guys the other day, they was expressing how their mothers didn't see, like, one day. They would see them, they would see the newspaper articles, but never saw the game. So, yeah, hey, man, I, I, thanks for sharing. And, Greg, Ron, you were really blessed, because even when you were overseas, it's like you were never too far from either myself or Valerie. We'd always, you know, you, get, you came into the country, Valerie was right there waiting on you, you know. Yeah. 
So we was all, we were never very far away. It didn't matter where Gregory was, you know, we we were always close to Gregory. Uh, um, important. Super important. But as far as um, if I had to do it all over again, knowing what I know now, I think I would, um, you know, just try to be a bit more confident, be more confident. As confident as I was, I know I operated in a in a space of fear a lot. And I would know that knowing what I know now, not try to get rid of the fear, but just have a better understanding of it. So I'd be, be better able to manage it. You know, I still did what I wanted to do. I, I, I can honestly say without regret that I did fulfill the goals that I set for myself, but just being able to operate in a space of, I understand this fear better and I can better manage it. That's a good one. Okay. I tell you, one of my things I, I've I always regretted is that uh, I did not play AAU. I, um, in the rec league, I was really good, and the, and the coach, uh, coach kind of spoiled me. He would drive around the neighborhood till he found me, pick me up, and take me to the to the games. Um, round twelve. Some coach had tried to get me to play AAU and you know, I lived in Riggs Park and we practiced in Kitland. And at that age, you know, driving to Kitland at four o'clock in the day was like almost like a 35 minute drive. So that was like way too far. Like I was used to shooting in the backyard until somebody came and scooped me up to go to the game. Right. <laughs> so I, I went to one practice, I went to two practices, went to the game. Nobody really knew me, so you know they ain't pass me the ball like that. My father was like, "You want to go back?" I'm like, "No, nah, I don't want to go back." But I was really, I was severely under recruited, not knowing that that was that's where everybody got their exposure on that on that AAU circuit, on that AAU scene. So mm -hmm. I, I just wonder, had I got a chance, and again for the competition wise too. So once you dominate your neighborhood, you think you're on the top of the hill, it's hard to push yourself to new heights. But I, I'd, mm -hmm. I'd have ran across you and I'd have ran across all the other great guards and I'd have been like, oh man, when I get back around the neighborhood, I got to work on this, I got to get, I got to work on that. Right. So that was one thing mm -hmm. I, I you know. and, the, and the modern athlete now, they, they, they're they traveling, like my daughter, she's, she's getting to see everything all across the country, like at 15. Mm -hmm. she's, Seeing teams from California, all of that stuff. So I, I, I just, you know, imagine, man, the modern athlete today. We look at him and and we kind of, I don't know about y'all, but you know, we kind of envy him a bit. I don't. I you don't. Mm -mm, not at all. Mm -mm. Man, because like, I don't. You know how many pairs of shoes my daughter got? And she, <laughs> <laughs> listen, she got sit wrong. So my sister, Eric, you don't know, my sister has a bedroom dedicated to tennis shoes. Okay. Her whole bedroom is, it gotta be a hundred pair in there. Got All it. right. And, and, and this ain't her being a sneakerhead. This is just, you know, this is just as she's accumulated or whatever, whatever. You know, kids yeah. connect shoes now. She wasn't a collector. She just right. had that much in her wardrobe. Right. Vanessa, she, again, she got at least 50 pair of shoes. Like at my heyday, I had 10. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I'm just a little bit in. Yeah, definitely. Like, I, I agree with both of you. I agree with both of you. Like there's so much not to envy, but I, I definitely remember playing in t-shirts with magic market numbers on them. So, uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, the uniform, you know, just there's a lot that they have, man. Like just even the access to the world, you know what I mean? Just traveling and, uh, you know, the experiences that, because like even now, I, mean, I don't miss playing. I, I miss being on the team though. I miss being able to travel, yeah. hotels, buses, flights, uh, stuff like that. So now they're getting that experience even younger. So uh, I, I know what you mean by that, Greg. Yeah. What I would like to see is that, yes, they have, again, you have all this stuff, but it's like they're being locked in a grocery store and yet they're still going to starve because just all the tech, like I said, all the technology that they have and that they can manipulate, 
you would be amazed that when I am teaching and I'm saying, okay, I need you to do this in Google Slides. I need you to go over here. I need you to remove the background from here. I want you to do this. I need, I need you to insert this video here. They cannot do it. Yeah. It makes them they cannot, want They cannot do it. And I'm like, yeah, and I look at them. The they have it makes them not want it. Uh, right. And I'm it. like, well, wait a minute. Why can't you do this? Like, y'all have all of this. And then... You know, always been on social media and posting. Okay, I see y'all. Y'all talk y'all on social media. You, you're letting people know. Do it, do it. Good. Good for you. All right, now, why can't I get you to open your mouth in class? Like, son, there's a disconnect there. And mm -hmm. you're going around to all these countries and seeing all this new stuff. Tell me what you learned. What did you get from it? They can't tell me. And that's why I'm, and to me, the lack of, it seems to me the create the lack of creativity amongst some of them and just the unwillingness to just, you know, explore and ask questions and critical critically think. Like that is a lost skill. That is a seriously lost skill. And I'm just like, and I spend more of my time teaching those things than anything than maybe sometimes the actual academics of what I have to teach. Y'all both look. Y'all both got me that look like. <laughs> yeah, bro. No, no, no. I'm just taking it all in. That was really good. It's facts. You know, the fact <laughs> that they don't have to research everything's at their fingertip makes them not have the skill to actually like critically think through it. Like we remember I'm when sure. we had to go the card catalog. Oh well, wait a minute. Y'all yeah. younger than me, so wait. Did y'all even uh, have a card catalog? Yeah, the Dewey decimal system. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, I mean, it's like, now I don't go any, you know, I'm guilty of some things. I don't go anywhere, but I do it for more practical purposes. But like, I don't go many places without using ways. Like, I don't oh, know. Oh, me neither. <laughs> right. Me neither. No, I, I, no, I, but see, that's the thing. We utilize the technology for what it's there for. Like, we know this is a tool, so why not use it? And we do avail ourselves to it. I see no problem with that. Like to me, if, if you got the tools, yes, use it. But I'm like, you have the tools, but you show no interest in trying to learn how to use it. You have no interest in yeah. expanding. You have no interest of doing some critical analysis, doing that deep dive into it. Well, why did you mess up on that throw? You don't know. What do you mean? You don't want to do the throw. Come on now. <laughs> I, I, I struggle with that they're going to starve in the grocery store thing, but uh, I got to sit on that a little longer. I, I to me, you to me, me, you sound like, you sound like the old, the old, um, the old uh, NBA player that don't like nothing the young people do. The meta, the metaphor, the metaphor is accurate though. It's, it's, it's a metaphor of, um, you just went grocery shopping, right? And refrigerator is full and the kids will tell you there's nothing to eat, right? So I, I understand yeah. the metaphor because it, it's not what they want, right? So they don't know how to have the just, if, they, if that's all they had, they may not know how to like, and it's all they need, but because they want something different, they're in a grocery store full of stuff that they wouldn't even know how to make do. You know, it's, it's, so the metaphor is accurate. I'm not saying they, you know, literally starve. They would eat them oodles and noodles if they had to, but they don't want it. Like we have amazing lunch here at Sidwell, unbelievable, even since I was a student. And the kids will still walk down to Nando's and Popeyes and all that stuff. Oh, got it, got it. Well, thank you very much for sticking up for me, Aaron, because Gregory, he just seems, and, and you know what, Gregory, I'm just, I'm just, and I'm not the old, and stop calling me old. <laughs> you want to stop that. See, this is, see, what you don't understand about Gregory is he will subtly throw those jabs in there, jab. and usually he can't get me on Still nothing like else. But he will he will get me on my age. And he was like, well, Ronka, you old. And it's old. You old. <laughs> Gregory, if I think you lucky we not in the studio no more. Because I would reach across. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, but you still look good, though. Well, thank you. Well, yeah. thank you. I do try. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But I can see, well, as a good coach, I can detect energy levels. And, <laughs> and the energy <laughs> level is starting to drop just a little bit but no I really I can't you know it is almost time for us to um close out but I think this is really you know really is going to um end our end our segment and just end up this little uh you know three episodes or this trilogy that we that we've had um 
I, I just think it's been so good. I've just learned so much. Um, Eric, the Veronica Harris show is here for you. Anytime you want to, anytime you want to talk about something, get something out. We are here for the community. Um, all, all of the community, all socioeconomic status, <laughs> yes. even though we know you rolling with the high one over there, <laughs> um, hey, facts is facts, but we are here and, um, we definitely going to, I'm just going to definitely gonna keep more eyes out on you. Cause like I said, I heard about Sid Well Friends, but I didn't know this was going on at Sid Well Friends. Thank so you. I've been educated on that. Gregory, it's always good to see you. Gregory. Yes, you as well. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Very good to see you as well, Brock. All right. Well, let's just end it because I know we all got to, you know, get on with our lives and stuff like that. But again, I thank you so much. Gregory, you have truly been a blessing this time. Yeah. For the, That's right. <laughs> for the choice of guests. Thank you so much. Thank you to our producers. Um, you know, Mommy and Tony, our director, we thank everybody for sticking with us on this. And we are the little engine that could. And till the next time, Gregory, what do we say? Throwing the deuces. Throwing up the deuces. All right. See y'all next time. Okay.